Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, we stopped uh, here last class where we derived the energy equation across the discontinuity representing the reaction zone and we wanted to see how this looks like uh, in what is now beginning to shape up as what is called as a Hugonio plot. So this is what you would actually call. Uh, Okay, to some extent, a simplified Rankine Hugonio equation. So, how do you, how do you look at this Hugon, uh, this this curve uh, in the Hugonio plot? The Hugonio plot is a domain of p infinity, but one over rho infinity, and then you know, begin to look at how this looks like. You now have a coefficient gamma over gamma minus one times p infinity divided by rho in, rho infinity. So this is itself like a product of p infinity and one over rho infinity, right? And of course we now say p naught over rho naught is like a parameter that represents like the initial state. And again, you can look at a p infinity times one over rho infinity coming up over here with a different coefficient, of course. Therefore, it's not going to cancel. Typically, you'll always look for things like things getting cancelled, but that's not going to happen here. And of course, you now have a mixture of things like p infinity over rho naught and p naught over times one over rho infinity uh, times again you have a p naught over rho naught uh, term. So this is beginning to look like uh, if you're now looking at like an x x y plane, you're now beginning to look look at a curve that's kind of like 
uh, some a x y plus uh, b x plus c y plus d equal to uh, 0 right. So if you now have like a leading order term like x y right what would that actually signify if, if x y if x y equal to 1 if that is what you had okay that is like uh, a is equal to 1 and d is equal to uh, minus 1 then you would simply and b and c are 0 in, in whatever uh, format that I just template that I just uh, explained um, you would be looking at uh, uh, a rectangular hyperbola but since you also have uh, a, a p infinity divided by rho naught term and a p naught divided by rho infinity term we also have some b's and c's that are non-zero therefore it is not exactly a rectangular hyperbola but it is going to be modified so it is it is going to be like a hyperbola here. So hyperbola uh, is, is going to now look like if, if you now had uh, something like that okay. Now, we do not know exactly if it is going to be a rectangular hyperbola in this p infinity 1 over rho infinity axis domain it is very likely that you could have this cross over to a lower value okay. So I am not saying that this exactly is the curve at the moment but what we are trying to do is to sort of construct this curve as we go along okay. Well why did we want this curve? because we wanted to solve these conservation equations across this discontinuity to locate um, react product properties given the reactant properties including u0 which is something that we are not very sure that we know uh, to begin with and u0 is actually embedded in the slope of the Rayleigh line but the Hugonio uh, so this is what is now called the, so this, this rectangular hyperbola is what is called as a Hugonio curve. And the Hugonio does not involve any m dot. In other words, it is it is like a purely thermodynamic curve. Okay, so the flow information is actually buried in the Rayleigh line, which is a mixture, which which is a combination of uh, uh, continuity and momentum together. So the, so the, that that carries the flow information, whereas this the, the energy the thermal energy equation effectively is not covering any. Uh, uh, flow information there and then we are what we are looking for is a intersection of these two the, the, these two curves that is the Rayleigh line and the Hugonio curve and sure enough we find that there are a couple of intersection points which will now tell us that if you now started out with the P0 and 1 over rho0 as the reactant conditions and uh, this particular point is typically referred to as what is called as the origin of the Hugonio plot right and then what we want to see is where is actually the, the, the conservation equations uh, where are they satisfied again right. So what you will find is that you now get like about two points where they could be satisfied so you, you have like at least two possible solutions this is a great progress that we have done uh, starting from when we did not do when, when we did not have any equations to solve uh, we had like an entire plane to search the solution and then when we now had the Rayleigh line we now reduce the possible set of points to a line rather than uh, a, a plane. And since you now also have the energy equation in the form of the Hugonio curve, we look for a point point of intersection. Of course, you're now beginning to see like about two points of intersection instead of just one, right? So we now have to look at what are the different possibilities for these two points of intersection. Will it be only two, or will it be when? Are, when will it be one? And if it is two, what are the possible two values? and so on right obviously this is a this is a curve 
which has the same same sign for the curvature that means it is always like a like concave facing upwards and side uh, upwards in, to the right therefore since the curvature does not change sign you do not have any points of inflection in the Hugonio curve um, when a straight line intersects with this you can have up to two intersection points you are not going to expect more than that right but you could look for one intersection point or none when would you get one intersection point if the Rayleigh, if the Rayleigh line were tangent to the Hugonio right or the Rayleigh line never really intersects with the Hugonio then you do not have any solutions right. So there is some hope we are now looking at 0 solutions 1 solution or 2 solutions not more than that good. So with this picture we now see how to go about constructing this plot a little bit more carefully right. The first thing that we notice is the first thing that we notice is if your Q is greater than 0 okay so for for Q greater than 0 the Hugonio curve passes to the right and above the origin that is there okay for Q equal to 0 You could also check this if you want by plugging in values for p infinity and rho infinity for q equal to 0 the Hugonio curve would pass through the origin okay see so right now what is q q is essentially negative of what is called as h infinity not minus h not not and h infinity not and h not not or in turn sigma i equals 1 to n um, delta h of i y i not delta h of i not and uh, sigma i equals 1 to n y i infinity h delta h of i not right. So it is only because of the compositions at y i at, at the not condition and the infinity condition uh, the delta h of i not is, 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 is the same for both because it is a standard heat of formation right. Uh, so we are now getting these different uh, h i not and uh, h, h i uh, infinity and then the difference between the two is essentially the chemical heat release with a, with a negative sign okay. So that is a chemical heat release. If you Q is equal to 0 that means you are not having any chemical heat release. So if a chemical heat release is not there essentially we are talking about a non-reacting mixture right. If you have a non-reacting mixture uh, with a Hugonio curve that is somewhat similar to what you what you might have gone through gone through in a, a basic gas dynamics course with where, where you are still looking at um, as a matter of fact if you now think about how we, we had this equation. Um, we had like a h naught plus half u naught squared is equal to h infinity half u infinity squared that is without the q right um, and that is exactly the same as what you would call as an adiabatic energy equation that you would um, uh, that you would write for a um, energy conservation across a shock okay. So across a shock you would find that the stagnation temperature remains the same the stagnation enthalpy particularly remains the same right uh, that that is true when you do not have any heat release okay or, or any chemical heat release. So a curve that actually passes through the origin with Q equal to 0 is what is called as the shock Hugonio 
right. Now that tells us that if you now have a Q not equal to 0 and we expect typically the Q to be greater than 0 rather than uh, less than 0 we are not looking at cooling kind of thing right. So what is it when you now have a, a, a wave that is reacting in addition to being a shock right. So you are now beginning to think of it and then of course a shock is actually either phasing a supersonic flow or it is travelling at supersonic flows this is supersonic speeds relative to like still uh, reactants what is it I mean this is not something that we thought about we started talking about something like uh, low Mach number conditions and all those things but now we are getting into something but of course in, in what we are doing now we are not really making the low Mach number assumption right. We should be now game for any kind of Mach numbers that are approaching your your wave, but the the but the language that we are beginning to use is now beginning to adopt, uh, admit the possibility of supersonic flows, right? Okay. When would that happen? So let's just do this a little bit more carefully. Uh, let me let me declutter this picture of all the. Um, terminology that we have that we are now used to and we just want to now redraw this only with things that we want to now take take uh, so let us say you now have the origin again I am not going to name it now and uh, let me first draw the Hugonio line a little bit farther away and uh, let us now say that you go here and here and let us see what happens here your Rayleigh line can have only a negative slope right. So if you now if this is your origin of the Hugonio the Rayleigh line can fill only the third quadrant sorry the, the second quadrant or the fourth quadrant. right it cannot go like this so it cannot get into the first quadrant it cannot get into the third quadrant. So this part of the Hugonio is never going to be used right so we now have to erase this part away from consideration we just do not want to worry about that part of the Hugonio at all we will worry about a part of the Hugonio that starts from where um, 1 over rho infinity is equal to 1 over rho naught okay another part of the Hugonio where p infinity is equal to p naught what does that mean if you were to now have a solution that is somewhere here that means your Rayleigh line is sort of passing like this it means two things one your final pressure is about the same as the initial pressure okay the pressure hardly changed when the flow went past this wave second this Rayleigh line has a almost like a zero slope that means the wave is not moving much so it is it is possible that you are talking about nothing okay so it is like you do not have a wave so obviously the pressure did not increase yeah that cannot be true because because the density increase well, the density decreased so there was a density decrease that was primarily because if the pressure remains the same and the density decreased that is because the temperature should increase so you had a heat addition all right that is the, that is the reason why the Hugonio is shifted away from the origin in the first place so you had a heat addition correspondingly you had a temperature rise but you did not really have a wave that was moving fast enough and you did not have a corresponding pressure rise this is now beginning to look like what we were talking about for what is called as low Mach number conditions right the pressure is approximately a constant right so low Mach number simply means that the, the wave is not moving too fast or relative to the wave the reactants are not moving in too fast right therefore the Mach number is very low. So 
you now have one branch of the Hugonio that is now beginning to correspond to waves that are moving kind of very slowly okay and the fastest wave could 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 possibly have a a, a slope that is tangent to this at this point that is the fastest wave that is possible that is the highest m dot that this branch of your Hugonio will intersect okay if you for, for any faster waves the, Hugo, the Rayleigh line is now going to actually go downward and fail to intersect the this branch of the Hugonio will, will that intersect the other branch not, not, not immediately you now see that you have to actually go to a still steeper Rayleigh line that will begin to intersect the other side or if you are thinking about an experiment where you want to conduct uh, a, a stabilization of a wave by sending in uh, reactants at faster and faster uh, flow rates right. Between this particular flow rate and that particular flow rate you just cannot stabilize a flame at all and then you again begin to stabilize flames for all Rayleigh lines that are now having steeper slopes than this you can have points of intersection until you get to this point which has an infinite slope right it is kind of again just like how a zero slope is almost impossible and we are thinking about like very low velocities right a infinite slope again is not something that we, are, that, that, we, that we want to think about but very high very essentially very high uh, slopes that means very high velocities for which the pressure jumps but the volume did not change a lot. So this is more like a isochoric process that is what you started out with was the isobaric process right. So in the one extreme you started out with an isobaric process corresponding to very slow waves right and then you could think about a little bit faster waves but with a certain uh, decrease in pressure not a whole lot of decrease okay but from here to here you see that the pressure is decreasing only a little bit okay but the expansion that is the density decrease as you go this way 1 over density increases so density actually decreases there is a significant amount of expansion that is going on right from the beginning for because of the heat addition and then nothing until you get to very fast waves and you can now get these very fast waves to go all the way to the other limit where you are getting close to an isochoric process that is like a constant volume situation right and uh, there again because of the heat addition you hardly have any change in volume but essentially the pressure increased right. So what you then have is this is what is called as the lower branch of the Higonio and this is what is called as the upper branch right. And we want to call these points the, the tangents the tangent uh, relays intersecting at these points as the LCJ point and this is the UCJ point CJ stands for Chapman Juguay. So the LCJ indicates the highest velocity of what is called as deflagration waves. So this is the lower branch corresponds to what is now called deflagration right. So LCJ is the fastest
deflagration wave and the upper branch of the Higonio corresponds to what is called as detonation and UCJ corresponds to the slowest detonation wave. right and the m dot ucj is still significantly greater than m dot lcj that means the slowest detonation wave is still much faster than the fastest deflagration wave that simply means that you now have two classes of two classes of waves that are significantly apart there is really no overlap at all in their wave speeds and in fact what i would actually should, what i should actually say is this should be much greater than so in terms of wave speeds like instead of writing m dots if I were to write rho, uh, u naughts assuming like they started out with the same rho naught right what this now see I told you that I do not even I do not know what the u naught is right I am still not going to know the u naught until the end of this exercise but I am beginning to get some ideas about what the bounds of my u naughts should be for two different kinds of processes that we are now beginning to think about namely deflagration and detonation right. So what we are talking about here is for detonation uh, for, for deflagration waves your u naughts of the or of the order of a few tens of centimeters per second under laminar conditions but your detonation waves so to a few tens of centimeters per second is still less than a meter per second but your detonation waves are typically of the order of a few kilometers per second so you now see that there is like about three orders three to four orders magnitude difference uh, a factor of three three to four orders magnitude uh, difference between the detonation velocities and deflagration velocities what we should further notice then is uh, uh, that we want to think about the deflagrations going as subsonic waves whereas the detonations are going at supersonic waves but before we do that we want to now um, quickly go through some mathematical properties. Uh, because we started out with mathematical equations for these like this one and then we notice that, that that goes like a hyperbola uh, and then we of course had a simpler mathematical expression representing a straight line very very easy to see this for the Rayleigh line and we are now looking at these intersection and so on what I would like to uh, first of all before we proceed further is to give you expressions and th these are not very difficult for you to derive and these are all like typical exam exercises okay so you can figure out for example depending upon the q what is this point okay the 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 the, the um, lowest value of 1 over rho infinity possible for the detonation branch and uh, where, where is this point for example uh, what, what, are, what are the coordinates of your lcj point that will also depend on q and uh, what are the maximum so what is the maximum value of 1 over rho infinity that is possible right and what are the maximum values of p naught that is possible that is of course equal to p infinity and what is the minimum value of p infinity that is possible what you will find is you will you will notice if you now try to actually look at the mathematics of this this would ultimately go and intersect the x axis or the abscissa right and where it intersects is where you would get the maximum value of 1 over rho infinity and the corresponding value of p infinity would be 0 okay as a matter of fact what you will find is this this rectangular hyperbola 
asymptotes to a value of p infinity that is negative. So what you can actually do is to go ahead and find out the horizontal asymptote for this rectangular hyperbola and you should find that that is negative and since you cannot admit negative pressures in reality uh, you do not worry about where exactly it asymptotes and you have to stop thinking about it at where it hits the abscissa that is corresponding to your p infinity equal to 0 and uh, then there is like a corresponding 1 over rho infinity that is a maximum value to which the proper the, the products can expand right. Similarly you can look at the upper branch and find out that the lowest value of p infinity it can take will depend on q but the corresponding 1 over rho infinity will be equal to 1 over rho naught right then you can also locate this point the UCJ, UCJ and then where does it go so what you will have to find out is there is a vertical asymptote which is having a positive value of 1 over rho infinity that is the lowest 1 over rho infinity that it can take but it is now going to asymptote to that that means the maximum value of p infinity that it can take is infinity when it hits asymptote eventually at infinity right. So these now give you limits for these pressures and densities that it can uh, take in these different branches of uh, the Hugonio curve so we, we, can, we can go through that but I think, I, I think even before that we can point out that uh, so in the, in the deflagration branch in the deflagration branch p infinity is less than or less than or equal to p naught right and 1 over rho infinity is greater than it is certainly greater it is not greater than equal to because it would be greater than or equal it, it would be equal to 1 over rho naught only for q equal to 0 for positive values of q you can never get your 1 over rho infinity to be equal to 1 over rho naught so it is always greater than 1 over rho naught for q greater than 0 that is uh, that is rho infinity is less than rho naught the density decreases and the pressure decreases okay for q greater than 0 you always have t infinity greater than t naught this is heat addition so the temperature increases right so with the temperature increasing density decreasing is not news but pressure decreasing is indicating these two together then given this means you now have the products go through an expansion right so it is when, when you have an expansion is when your pressure decreases and your density decreases even with the temperature increase right. So a deflagration branch corresponds to an expansion wave right on the other hand if you now look at the detonation wave in the detonation branch your p infinity p infinity can never be equal to p naught for q greater than 0 right only for only only for q equal to 0 will the hugonio pass through the origin and you have only one tangent relay right but for q greater than 0 p, p infinity is always greater than p naught for q greater than 0 which implies again t infinity is greater than p naught you always have a heat addition that you are, that you are having in mind in, in both cases right t infinity is greater than p, uh, t naught all right so p infinity is always greater than p naught and 
1 over rho infinity can be less than or equal to 1 over rho naught right. So the highest value of 1 over rho infinity that you can hope for is this right that is equal to 1 over rho naught all, all other 1 over rho infinities are going to be less than that and this implies uh, that is rho infinity can be um, greater than or equal to rho naught that means you now have a density increase corresponding to a pressure increase accompanying a temperature increase when the temperature increases you would like to think that the density should actually decrease but if the density decreased sorry if the density increased accompanying a temperature increase that simply means that the pressure increased a lot more right sure sure enough you look at the way the curve goes it's it's going crazily in the along the pressure axis right so the pressure is obviously increasing a lot so taken taken together all these things mean that we now have a compression wave right so a detonation basically corresponds to a compression wave so we talked about a shock hugonio we are now beginning to look at one of the branches actually corresponding to compression so it is all kind of going together you can see that there are there are um, elements of what we have done done before in gas dynamics beginning to look like a special case of what we are what we are talking about right it is a special case uh, in, in two ways one first of all uh, it, it is a non reactive case okay what, what we what we went through in gas dynamics is basically a non reactive case as opposed to a reactive case here and the moment you have reactions then it belongs to only one part which is like the the the, the uh, supersonic propagation as we will as we will see and show uh, corresponding to detonation whereas there is also another part which is uh, corresponding to deflagration that is subsonic propagation and where expansion happens rather than compression all right um, let me also say one more thing uh, so now that we have uh, also acclimatized ourselves with some more uh, here we could further actually divide this into uh, five parts uh, I should say four parts rather uh, so you now have you can you can now divide your upper branch as something that is above the UCJ and something that is below the UCJ you can you can divide the lower branch as something that is to the left of LCJ and something to the right of LCJ. So let's now call this um, call this region one. This is region two. This is region three, and this is region four. So we essentially are looking at the upper branch as a detonation branch. The lower branch as a deflagration branch. So what we would like to call this as um, region 1 at the moment they are just names we just do not still understand them uh, more completely but let us just give the names first and then start understanding because that will kind of aid us aid us in understanding. So region 1 um, is essentially what is called a strong strong detonation and then of course you now have um, CJ detonation. And then we have region 2 that corresponds to a weak detonation and then we have region 3 this corresponds to a weak deflagration and then you have the CJ deflagration and then we have region 4 that should by now be easier for you to figure that should be called strong
deflagration. For you to remember this at this stage let us just say that when you are now looking at a region that is above the CJ point here the UCJ point here what that simply means is we are now looking at a solution so that means your 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 uh, Rayleigh line has to actually pass somewhere there and then you are looking for a, 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 a intersection somewhere there right that means the Rayleigh line is obviously steeper than the tangent really there that means the wave is propagating faster there right and it is now leading to a very high pressure and a very um, very high density that is a low 1 over rho infinity and a high p infinity say a very low 1 over rho infinity means a very high rho, rho infinity so this is actually corresponding to a lot of pressurization and a lot of compression so that is why we are basically saying strong but it is going to be a little bit more than that we will we will we will have to see what is the um, propagating Mach number for the wave and what is the downstream Mach number for the um, products it is based on that that actually we now give this nomenclature that this is strong detonation but at the moment you can clearly see that you, you this is pretty strong in the sense it is it is having a lot of compression whereas a weak detonation is just as fast if you were to now look at a solution that is here it is really line is pretty steep as well just as just as steep as well so it is pretty fast all right but it is not leading to a very high pressure and the departure from the origin is not, not a lot in the 1 over rho infinity axis so your 1 over, 1 over rho infinity is not a lot lower therefore the rho infinity is not a lot higher therefore you are having a, a smaller amount of compression when, when compared to uh, the, the strong detonation so relatively speaking we would like to think of this as a weak de detonation okay what we will actually find is uh, when, you, when you now have a flow that is going through a detonation wave just like in a, in a normal shock you should expect that if the flow is approaching the wave at supersonic speeds if the strong if the shock is very strong you should expect the flow to actually become subsonic all the way that is a, that is a mark of its, its, its uh, uh, extent of compression so if it has been compressed a lot it also gets diesel the flow also gets decelerated right so a lot of compression would mean a lot of deceleration all the way down to subsonic uh, levels whereas in a weak detonation you expect that the downstream uh, product flow is still remaining supersonic although not as supersonic as the um, upstream reactants there is the deceleration all right but not down to subsonic levels correspondingly the CJ detonation should mean that of course you are going through a supersonic uh, reactant flow reaching up to the wave but the uh, react the, but the products correspond exactly to sonic conditions that is what is dictate that is what is uh, denoting a CJ the de de detonation similarly if you now begin to look at this side what, what it means is in a deflagration we are looking for an expansion so when you are now looking when, when you are now looking for an expansion that means the pressure should decrease and the density should also decrease if you now look at this region the pressure decreases are not a lot and the density decrease um, the, the density decrease or the or should say 1 over rho infinity increase is also modest therefore a rho infinity decrease is also modest right so you are now not having a fairly, a fairly large decrease in p infinity and uh, rho infinity and uh, therefore you are expecting like a weak deflagration so you are now looking at a Rayleigh line that is corresponding to a, 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 a velocity that is still lower than the CJ deflagration right it is slower and so correspondingly you are not really expecting a large decrease in pressure and density okay. but for this low deflagration you still can intersect over there so the, the, this, this wave is just as slow but it is actually causing a large decrease in pressure and a correspondingly large decrease in density 
right that is a lot of expansion that is going on and that is why we want to term it as a strong deflagration right. So when you now have a large expansion that is going on proportionately you are now expecting the flow to accelerate. So when a, when a reactant flow is actually going through a deflagration wave it tends to accelerate and this is actually common practice. So in all these things we always try to relate to what we already have experienced with. So what I would like to suggest is when you are dealing with detonation waves you now recall what happens in gas dynamics what you have learnt in your one dimensional gas dynamics from your undergraduate let us say if you have gone through a gas dynamics course in your undergraduate level you can recollect what happens across a shock. And, and, and try to modify your thoughts to accommodate reactions and so on. When you are thinking about deflagration waves uh, this is actually more commonplace uh, in terms of uh, uh, daily experience like what happens in like in a Bunsen burner for example right. So if you now have a Bunsen burner and then you have like a cold reactant flow that is approaching the Bunsen burner uh, and then it, it goes through the flame and the flame is like a conical flame. And the, the, the and and the and the uh, flow goes through this. It now expands and then kind of goes like that. Okay, and then you you, you can also see that uh, occasionally, and this is not very difficult for you to um, think about as a thought experiment, or even go back and see if you can do this and see for yourself. When you now have like a inclined flame like this in a Bunsen burner, and if you had like like a like a little um, uh, particle that is kind of uh, uh, glowing okay so we now see how this glow happens as it as it goes along when it passes through the flame it goes much faster when compared to when it tried to approach so it is like a little spark of uh, uh, some, some particle that is just uh, glowing you can clearly see that it just goes faster right. So when you now have a deflagration wave the flow accelerates when it goes past it because it is expanding right. Now while you are here you are not expanding a whole lot and that is because it is a weak deflagration and therefore you started out with the flow approaching you at subsonic speeds and you are accelerating to further faster but still subsonic product speeds that is the mark of weak deflagration but when you now go to go past the uh, LCJ over here to the strong deflagration what that means is you are now having a very uh, large amount of expansion that is going on correspondingly there must be a very significant amount of acceleration that goes on to the extent that we end up finding that the products actually have supersonic speeds by the time they are getting past this wave where although they started out with subsonic conditions for the reactants. Correspondingly what just like how we found in the case of UCJ what this means for the LCJ is the approach velocities for the reactants is subsonic all right but the flow accelerates through the wave to exactly sonic conditions beyond for the, for the LCJ. Now if you really think about it this is getting a little bit more uh, fascinating or, or it is it is unbelievable fantastic okay. How can I have a wave that started out to be subsonic go through a flame and accelerate so much as to become supersonic is it possible for me to do so the answer is we do not come across that at all right. So in Bunsen burners and stuff you do not really get supersonic flows so what is going on. The answer there is outside the picture of what we are talking about we started out with the mass conservation equation we started out and then we went through the momentum conservation and then we went through the energy conservation we also talked about the species conservation but the energy conservation keep in mind is essentially coming out of the first law of thermodynamics but we never really considered the second law okay and, and we will never do that actually except to state that the this part of the wave that is the strong deflagration is not possible if you now start taking second law into account and that is the reason why you will never really find a wave starting from subsonic flows 
going through a strong deflagration to accelerate all the way to supersonic speeds that typically does not happen because it violates second law right and I, I think I may be able to show that briefly later on but let me also point out that I will try to show first of all the detonation waves all detonation waves in, or in fact I should say all detonation waves travel at supersonic speeds and I should also show that all uh, deflagration waves travel at subsonic speeds. The way I would like to sh I would show this is to consider the CJ detonation and the CJ deflagration. I would like to show that the CJ deflagration uh, is supersonic which means the slowest detonation is supersonic that means all of the detonations are going to be supersonic and I am going to show you that the fastest def def deflagration the, C the, uh, the, the lower CJ um, deflagration is going to be subsonic therefore all other deflagrations are subsonic right and then we will also consider the downstream Mach numbers for the UCG, UCJ and the LCJ and show that they are actually one thereby we can clearly see how these things are demarcated right but before we do that let us go back and just write out the properties of the Hugonia curve on where they intersect what the asymptotes are and all those things in the next class thank you.